In our previous video, we started making some modifications to the flow of our application, most notably the fact that we created a new window or a new win form, and then we set it to be the initial form to be launched when our application starts. So when I click start, and we would, would traditionally see the current form, now we're seeing our main window. So now we need to start transforming main window into an actual main window and a container. We started looking at the concept of multi-document interfaces, and so that's what we're going to do in this video. Now I'm relaunching main windows design, and I'm going to remove this label, and I'm going to just make this main window a bit bigger. So I can always just, you know, adjust the width or the natural width of the window, width and height, of course, by dragging it or by, you know, expanding it or collapsing it accordingly. Now, what I want from the main window is to be able to launch other windows. And right now I really only have one other, but you know, we're building out an entire application. I'm sure whether you sketched it or you conceptualized it, you can imagine that there are a few windows that we will probably need to build before we can have an application that we would probably go and sell to a car rental agency. Now let's get into the meat of the matter. So what I want to do is go to my toolbox and I will want a menu. So I'm going to bring over a menu strip and I'm going to just add it to the top here. And then this menu strip will allow me to start building a menu. So as with most Windows applications, you know, you have file, you have edit, you have view, et cetera, et cetera. I am actually using the same technology that gives you this kind of menu. That is the menu strip, right? So I'm just, I just dra dragged over this menu strip and then now it's allowing me to start typing the menu options I have. So I can say manage vehicle listing, right? So that's like, I mean, you know, that would be my file and then it can be multi-level. So for the next level, I'm going to have add vehicle. I'm going to have remove vehicle, maybe um, edit vehicle and view listing. All right. So those are the many options that I envision for the managing of vehicles. I mean, as we go along, we probably will take out some of them because maybe we can get at least three of these done from one form. But for now, I'm just showing you that that's how you can go about building a menu, All right? So that's manage vehicle listing. And then I'm going to say manage rental records, All right? And then the next level would be to add a rental record. Uh, we can view archive. So this would be the archive of all the rentals that have occurred in the database so far. And then we'll probably want to edit rental record, right? So the, the rationale, I'm not going to put delete because maybe you would want your user to be able to add rental record, which we have a screen for already. That's how we started. Um, we would want them to view all the rental records that have happened. And maybe you'd want them to edit a rental record because, you know, if somebody change their mind about the rental agreement they were supposed to bring back tuesday and they want to bring back wednesday instead then they should be able to go in and edit that rental record you know stuff like that so i'm going to leave it at this for now and let's just click start and see what that looks like all right so now we have our main window and we see that we have our menu and when we click these buttons, well, nothing is happening right so we still have some work to do in order to get these menu options actually useful. So the first one that I think we should work on is the add rental record since that's the real feature that we've been building up until now anyway. So what I'm going to do is go back to my menu, expand it, and I don't know, some people I have this problem like I do, but when you click it, it's supposed to expand. If it doesn't, then, well, I click it until it's editable. And there I double clicked just now breaking my own cardinal rule but when i click it and it becomes edited by press enter and then it drops down so if you're having the difficulty getting it to drop down like i just did then that's what i used to go around it i don't know why my visual studio is behaving this way but i'm just working with it otherwise you shouldn't have a problem so what we want is a click event on this menu item because the the deduction would be that when i 
come to manage rental records and I click add rental record, then the expectation is that my rental record window should launch, right? So once again, click event. I can always right click, go to properties, go to the lightning bolt and change it, or I can just double click it and it will generate that click event stub for me. I notice the naming convention is going to tell me the, the text that is in the button and then it's a tool strip menu item underscore the click. All right. So that's the naming convention. And because I inadvertently double clicked the main one, I got the manage rental records click event um, showing up. Now, remember that if you get a wrong click event and you just delete it, you're going to have to do some amount of cleanup because if you delete it one time and then you go back to your design, you're going to end up with this nasty looking arrow, which is really worse than it really is because you can just click go to code over in the section here and it will show you the line in the generated code that is trying to call the function that you just deleted. So you can just remove that line and then you should have no problems thereafter. Of course, as you go along, you just do Control Shift and B to continue to build your application to make sure that you have no errors. So you see, my build was successful and I can close any unwanted tabs and my design view has returned to normal. So where were we? We were looking at setting up the click event for our menu strip, our tool strip menu item. So if you remember how we launched the main window from our car rental um, form, then you can write the code. Otherwise, I'm just going to go, go and review it one more time. So what we did in our ad rental record was to put in this button, purely experimental, but what it did was it launched the main window. So I'm actually going to remove the button because I don't need it. It's not useful or it's not necessary going forward. So I removed it from the design, but I'm going to the code behind and I'm just going to review the code that we wrote in the button click event. I hope you notice also that removing the control does not remove the event that was attached to it. So the event is still there. It just has zero references because there's nothing that is calling it, all right? So inside of this click event, what we did was launch an instance of the window or the form that we want to launch and then we called the dot show function inside of that object so i'm actually just going to remove this unwanted click event so if you had it you can remove it if you feel like you want to keep it that's no problem you leave it alone but i'm going back over to my main window my click event and the window that I intend to launch is add rental records. So I need a variable and I'm going to use var this time. So I'm going to say var add rental record, All right? So just fix some spelling errors here. Add rental record is equal to a new instance of my class add rental record. So notice, of course, that yes, it's the same name, but one is common case A, one is capital A. This one is the class name. This one is the object name. All right. So just make sure that you adhere to the strict um, rules where it comes to casing. All right. So now that I've declared this object, the next thing I need to do is say add rental record dot show. All right. And then I can save and then press start. And then when our window launches, we're going to test it out. So I click add rental record and there it is. Once again, it came up on my other screen. So now we have our button working and it's going to work the same way as many times as I'm going to click it, it's going to launch that window, right? So that's not desirable. One and two, notice that this form, it came up on my other screen because it can come up at any point where it feels comfortable. And that's not necessarily the experience that we want. We would prefer that this form is kind of tethered to the main window and that when I close the main window, um, everything closes and everything is tethered to the main window. So then we have two other things that we need to do. So I'm going to go back to my main window design and I'm going to change a very important option where the making it the MDI container is concerned. So multi-document interface means that each form would be seen as a document pretty much. And then the 
MDI parent or that multi-document interface parent or container would be the storage place for all of those documents or all of those forms. So as soon as a form is created, it is created inside of the parent and it cannot exist outside of the parent. So what we need to do is in main window, we right click, go to properties, and then we look for a property is MDI container. So you'll find that under window style and then you can change it is MDI container you made that true. So notice the difference in its appearance. When it falls, it looks, you know, lively, bright, vi more vibrant. It looks more alive. However, when I say true, then it looks grayed out and kind of dead. All right. But then that, that is one of those necessary evils to get it to be the MDI container. Now we've made it the container, but we have one more step where when we're launching our window, we need to tell the window that it's parent, whose parent, who the parent is rather, right? So right now it just launches, even though this is the MDI parent, the window that is being launched doesn't know that it is an MDI child, all right? So I'm going to add this other function where I'm going to say add rental record dot, or well, I'm going to change a property rather. So I'm saying add rental record dot MDI i parent right is equal to this all right so let me explain exactly what's happening here so one we already know that we're launching a window and we know that we're showing so we're declaring the object and then we're showing it in between though i'm telling you that having created that object you should know that your MDI parent is this, and this is a keyword in C-sharp that means whatever class you're in. So main window is being represented by the keyword this, because the MDI parent expects some form or some object of a form to be assigned. So when I say this, this is like a manifestation or an object of the main window. It is a keyword in any class. So if I go to the add rental records and I say this, in, inside of the add rental record class, this represents add rental record. So it's always relative to the class it is being used in. So when I say this inside of the main window, notice when I click it, it highlights main window because C sharp is automatically saying that, okay, I know that I represent the main window. So I'm saying that this main window is the MDI parent for the ad rental record, uh, ad rental record object, and then I want to show it. So let us see what difference that makes. So when I click start, our window launches and we can see that dead gray, we can see the difference. And then I'm going to launch the ad rental record. That's what I want to do. And notice it launched directly inside of the window this time. I didn't have to go and drag it over the screen. And also notice that it is completely contained within this main window. It cannot go anywhere. No matter what it does, it cannot go anywhere. I can minimize it inside of this main window. I can maximize it inside of this main window. I can close it and my way main window is still alive. And so this allows me to, when I'm finished doing this, close and then go ahead and view the archive or view the listing of vehicles whatever it is i can do that afterwards all right so that is how the main window on the mdi rather how the mdi concept works so i created main window so it could be the mdi container and going forward every other form will be launched and managed inside of this main window before I go, though, I want to make a few cosmetic changes. So I'm going to change the text in main window from just main window to say something like, um, you know, cruise car rentals. Um, and then inside of our car rental form, I'm going to say add rental record instead of saying car rental system. And also I'm going to change the text inside of the title bar for that form. So let me just exit and let me just do all of them in plain view so right clicking my form going to properties and in main window i'm going to call this cruise car rentals that's the name of our business or you know car rental management system sorry car rental management system let's make it generic because this is a product that we intend to sell so we don't want to brand it before we sell it right 
So that is the name in our main, in our main window. I'm going over to add rental record and I'm going to change the property for the form one text. So I'm going to right click, go to properties. It's showing me the events. I just click over to properties, change the text. And this one is going to be add rental record. And I'm going to change the text in the label finally. And this one is going to say add rental record. All right. So just some cosmetic changes just to make our application look and feel a bit more official. And then you can click start and we can just take one more look at everything just to make sure that everything is the way that we want it. So when I go to add rental record, it's going to launch the new window inside of the application and it looks a bit better, you know, easier on the eyes now that everything looks like it makes more sense. And we can do a cursor test just to make sure that we didn't break any existing code. So I'm just going to put in a test rental record and submit. And there we go. And if you want to go to the database and verify that it went in, you can do that. But I know it went in because we didn't modify the form. So each form, once again, is autonomous. It's its own document. It's going to behave off its own intelligence based on what you have coded into the code file for that form.